preaching to the choir now. Containerization is really cool. It is like VMware, except you don't, or it's like virtualization, but like you don't pay for the performance penalty. They're like really nice. Remember the first time you saw Docker doing its thing, you're like, whoa, awesome. I can finally deploy Rails apps without like breaking my servers. Um, so, you know, it's like really sweet, and I really like them, right? And it's nice because they let you move stuff around really easy, right? So I can move stuff between localhost on my laptop, my development cloud, and my production cloud. And it's the exact same thing the entire step. That's really powerful, right? And instead of doing the whole, hey, you deploy this, I'm going to the bar. Together we test and verify, right? And how, how you actually do this uh, is, is up to you. Like I said, there's different workflows. Just find one that works for you and, and have a plan. Like I said, at Canonical, we use a tool called Mojo to like do all of this, and it, it makes things nice and fast and easy for us. Um, this one will be controversial. Time to order hardware for the next quarter, right? And I'll be like, what ProLine's around? No, that I get to play with. And then we were sitting around, I was like, man, why, why don't we own hardware? Now, like, I'm actually starting to see really, really competent system administrators that like, have never been in a data center now, right? The young kids. It's like, nice MacBook. Do you know what a server looks like? I don't care, yay. Um, so it's very, very, really, it's very interesting, right? Where like you can actually do a lot of things that very large, very complex, without having to like have that initial investment of the hardware. And that's very powerful. That's why cloud is a thing. Um, it's really, really easy to say, you know what? Maybe I should be running some services on the West Coast because there's an actual hurricane coming on the East Coast. Um, and I also think it's really interesting how many people I've run into, this is actually kind of embarrassing, that like do understand cloud and AWS. And I'm like, hey, where do you keep your stuff? He's like, US East 1. I was like, you are kind of missing the point. But there's always a hurricane that comes. And then that's when everyone realizes, I should really learn how to like move my stuff around. Because um, that's how the pros do it. And you should do it. And it's like relatively cheap process compared to how it used to be. I used to be on a phone and be like, hey, other university. Do you want to do like some kind of like, I'll send you hard drives, you send me, you know, off-site backup, because I don't want to pay for Iron Mountain. Okay, um, and it's really nice, because you get a lot of really cool tools and services that you can like give permissions to, and if a student messes up a system, right, you just blow it away, and you don't care anymore, right, as opposed to who's, who's messing with the production. Like, uh, like, it was so cool. You join a university and you got a shell account, like, and that was like really hard to get back in the day. So it was like, that's why I went to college, to get a shell account, right? Um, I mean, you get like your home, whole thing. Now it's like, man, I could just give someone AWS creds and they go crazy and do all sorts of stuff. And if they mess up, that's fine. Um, we'll just blow it away. It doesn't, it doesn't break my uh, ability to serve production services. Oh my god, I need time. Um, so you'd like to think, oh yes, this is all amazing. Uh, this AWS thing is great. And then I realized, wait a minute. Why would anyone want to deal with the IT department when they have a credit card? And I started to think, hey, wait a minute. I'm also competing with Amazon and Azure and Google Cloud, right? I remember what it's like, I want to run a production service. It's like, yes, follow these steps. All this web form, blah, 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 blah. Then we get a PO. Then we get your hardware, da, 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 da. Or I could just go to Amazon and not even ever talk to George ever again. That condescending 1990s boff guy that no one wants to talk to. Right? And that is a big deal, right? And then when we talk... When we talk to companies all the time that do that, there's like a really great pattern where it's like, here's our old stuff in production that works and we don't touch it, right? And then here's our new thing. This is gonna be our new cloud. This is our OpenStack or whatever it is we're making. That's gonna be, we're gonna eventually move all that stuff here, right? And then this dotted box here is all the secret stuff that departments are running in AWS that I have no control over but I'm responsible for. You're like, yikes! But that's a thing, that's a thing. Um, so, you know, it's one of those things where it's like you're sounding an alarm to yourself that's saying, these tools are really great, right? But they also empower users to do whatever they want. So in, in a way, especially if you're like the kind of person that likes to host your own hardware, right? These tools are really great, but those tools, especially if you don't master them, can also be your demise, right? But why? I tried the cloud. It's like expensive. Um, and George, what you need to learn is you need to learn to punch above your weight. Right, and what does that really mean? The gist of what I want to say here is, right, if a bunch of guys at Facebook or Google or Twitter, or whatever high scale Linux um, thing that runs the modern world is, right, the more you learn to operate at that scale, right, the better off you will be, right, even if you don't think um, you need that. 
So you need, kind of need to be like the Defiant, right? Who, who likes Deep Space Nine? Right? So this ship, it was like a design mistake. The guns were too big and you shot the guns too much, it would like blow up. It was like, but it totally punched above this weight. That's why this ship is way cooler than the Enterprise. I'm telling you. Um, so you need to learn to be that like scrappy kind of, you know what? We need to model our services and the way we do business um, after like people who have really figured it out and know how to do it well. And I remember the first time I tried cloud, I was like, this is horrible. I don't understand what's going on here, right? Uh, a lot of people, they try to take their whole, their old applications, right? And they just copy them whole hog into like AWS and like, this is just really expensive VMware. Um, but it's not, right? Everything from your application to how you manage stuff and how you do cloud is just all about your architecture as opposed to if I copy and paste, I'm going to redo and move to the cloud, but I'm going to bring all my baggage with me, right? Like, why would you do that? Um, and that's when people really make platform decisions, right? That's when people say, well, you know, maybe it m now might be a time. That's why people use Ubuntu in the public cloud, right? They have to change how they do everything on deploying stuff in a cloud. And when you do that, all of a sudden you're like, you know, maybe it's time to look at a different way. And everything from the operating system to how you do it, all of a sudden it's all up for grabs, right? Um, one of my favorite things, George, I never have time to automate. And that's like this time loop horrible, like, like a, it's like a horrible time loop Star Trek episode, right? Where it's like, you're stuck in this, or, or the Greek Sisyphean guy, right? Who like, he keeps rolling the rock up and it slips down and he gets stuck on that. Like you have to actually have the discipline to be like, we can't go on this way. We have to move forward and do, do the way things, um, people who are smarter than me are doing it. Right? I have data, like, I can't do the cloud. I work at a bank. Right? I can't do the cloud. I work in health. Well, I get that. Um, but now you're starting to see banks are running out of AWS, and it's kind of weird. And even if the public cloud isn't for you, the economics of cloud are such a big shift um, that even running your local hardware in a cloud style, which is why people really like things like OpenStack. Um, and number four really kind of makes me sad. They're like, I'm too small. Like, I don't really like need all this kind of stuff, all this kind of overhead. I think, I think that's a shame if, if you have that attitude. Like you should be totally trying to take the best practices that other smarter people figured out and deploy that for yourself, right? Because open source isn't just about code, right? They're like, the code can be blah, 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 blah. But yeah, I get that. But the open sourcing of expertise between ourselves as professionals, I believe is just as important as the code, right? That why have a great kernel if like nobody knows how to use it, right? Um, and it gets more and more complicated when you look at some of these services. And you guys actually ever try to deploy OpenStack by hand? Not a good, did you have a good time? Nah, that's what I'm talking about. It's because you didn't use Madison Juju. Just kidding. I told you, I, I promise I wouldn't make it all in a Ubuntu commercial. Uh, but it is. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, so even if, even if you don't like these tools, right, you're like, I, I tried Mesos and it kind of wasn't for me, or maybe I kind of like doing things that I would. There are certain, what you want might not be the exact tools these people are using. Maybe you have a different view of the world on how things should operate, right? But there's certain properties of these large-scale systems that you totally want, right? Service self-healing is really nice, right? A piece of hardware blew up somewhere, and somebody moved a container somewhere else. I don't even know where it is, but my service is up and running. That's really, really nice, right? Sure, the pager still goes off, but like, your service is up, and it's working, and that's really great. Automated replication is just such a nice thing. It's like rsync, except I don't have to type anything, right? How many, any of you guys using Ceph? It's like the greatest, okay, so when you get back, be like, things that George is probably right on, maybe like Ceph, C-E-P-H, really great stuff, and it does like fossil system mm -hmm. replication, it does like really awesome stuff. Like, I run it at home, it's like that good. Um, but it just makes things really, really much nicer when you're using this advanced software, um, even at your, at your level. Having failover is really nice. Magical networking, right? Like, like when I try to understand like network layers and stuff, I get like confused and stuff, but it's like really nice when the cloud handles that for you. It's like, I want an instance. Here's the IP address. Didn't care where it came from, yay. Um, and it's also really nice to decouple services from the hardware, right? Like. Sometimes you don't really care where it is. As long as this, the application is getting the CPU, the RAM, and the performance that it needs, maybe I don't actually care what physical host it's running on or VM. Right? And also security, it's really nice to have really smart people figuring out the models of doing all these things, and you get the direct benefit. Um, so like we want it to look like this magical unicorn. 
That's why when you see, like, the first time I saw uh, the way Mesos worked, I was like, wow, that's like a magical unicorn of, like, awesomeness. I need to, I need to do that. Um, bottom line is your users are going to want these things. And George, and if you don't give it to them, they're going to find a way to get it. Right? And that might not be the IT guy at your company. Right? They might get it from another provider and then dun dun dun. It's like, I remember the first time a student came up to me, he was like, yeah, I kind of gave up on trying to get a server to like host here. I just did it on Amazon instead. And I was like, all right, whatever, float your boat, idiot. <laughs> and then like, I was thinking about it, I was like, oh my god, that guy was totally right. Why would I want to work with myself when I can just get the service that I want? Um, you guys ever seen this movie, Time Bandits? I love this movie. It has nothing to do with this talk. But when I saw this picture, I was like, God, I love this movie. It was so great. Um, I, I, I wanted to do like a joke for every time movie, but it got really weird like around like Terminator 2 and stuff. So in summary, oh my God, I've only got five minutes left? All right, good. I don't want to hold anyone back from the booze. That's, that's like a bad thing about having this slot. So if I were to tell myself, now that my adventure is over, um, I would definitely take a more service-oriented approach to everything, right? Stop thinking about individual machines and you have to, right? Because you're system, so you have to actually care about those things, right? But from a top level, you should kind of just think things as more of a service-oriented view, right? Like this service provides this service for these other services. How those services interconnect and talk to each other is like a big deal. That's that's Figuring out that model is really awesome because when you figure that out, the hardware underneath doesn't matter. You just know you need more, right? Um, and nothing is sacred. Shoot cattle, not snowflakes. Like, you know, it was like, well, you know, I've put so much time and effort in this whole manual way to do things. Even though these people over here have figured out a way that's totally better, I'm going to hold on to my thing because I'm emotionally attached to it. Um, it can be very dangerous, right? Um, but at the same time, you don't want to go full hog and chasing everything. It's like, yeah, I went to this talk and there was this Kubernetes thing. It's kind of just made 1.0 in the summer, but I moved our entire company to it. Like, you know, do your due diligence, right? I'm not saying go tear down everything you've built, right? Say, some rules will always apply to the Unix system, right? Like, never touch things on a Friday. We all know this. <laughs> um, right? So I'm not saying go out there and do crazy stuff. You should definitely be investigating crazy stuff, though, and you should be set up to do experiments and fail early and fail often, right? Um, and steal properties from large-scale people and design for failure. That's like the one, actually that should probably be my number one thing. It was, you know, go to a talk like Velocity, you know, go talk to a guy who works at Etsy, right? Large-scale stuff. Spotify does like really interesting ops stuff. Did you guys know that? How does Uber work, right? Um, how does Netflix work? Like, you are asking these kind of questions, and when you go to events like this, like you should totally be in people's faces about it. Like, be like, I don't understand. You just killed that. What happens here? What's a load balance? Like all sorts of questions that you can ask from people who are at scale and they love to talk to you, because at some point, everyone had to start from somewhere. And I don't think I've ever met a Linux person who's like, no, I'm not going to teach you awesome things. See you later. Um, <laughs> but consent services are much easier to manage than hosts. When you think about services as a whole instead, right, you're not constrained by the machine anymore. Oh, that sounds really like matrixy. Um, so that's just a lot easier to manage contained services. And bottom line, efficiency and speed enables your users to iterate faster, right? If you're company A and you compete with company B, right, you all kind of like are hiring the same developers, you make platform decisions, you, you do all these sorts of things, right? But if I can make these guys 10% faster at iterating, than these guys, they will always win, right? The guy who's always accelerating will always win, unless the race is really short, right? And this race is never really short, is it? Um, so your users will love you if you make things really efficient for them and fast. Um, so here's that slide for you students. Here's what I would, here's what I would learn if I would go back in time. Um, there's certain things that are not on this slide because they're given, right? So like, obviously Docker is one of these things because you need that for a lot of this stuff. Right? Um, so I really dig how Mesos does stuff. I think you should definitely investigate that. The whole kind of data center OS as one big scheduler thing is really interesting to me. Uh, I do not know as much about Mesos as I should. So that's my personal goal because I'm still learning this cycle is to learn um, more about Mesos and these 75 billion schedulers that you can get for them and they're very interesting. 
Um, I've mentioned Kubernetes and, and also Swarm. I think it's very interesting. Apache Spark is really good. If like you haven't realized, if I was a student and go back, definitely I would get a minor in like either statistics or mathematics or something because this area over here is exploding. IBM by itself is putting 3,500 developers on Spark this year, and that's just one company. Uh, very interesting big data stuff happening here. Um, and of course, OpenStack, right, is kind of like the demand there is just really like it's been years that I keep going to these conferences and very, very large companies always looking for really experienced people in these technologies, right? It's like a good thing when you go to a conference and every slide's like, we're hiring. Let me talk about our HR benefits instead of a tech talk because I need you people so bad, right? Um, so if you master any one of these things, um, I think, I think it would be set up. And of course, my job, I feel, is to give you all these things. So the tool we work on called Juju is kind of how you model all of these things to get that stuff either onto your better metal or AWS or GCE or Azure. How many of you are using, any of you are using uh, any Linux workloads on Azure? Microsoft Windows Azure? Oh, are you just ashamed? <laughs> oh, sorry, I, I, am. I, was, I was wondering how that joke was going to pull, pull over. Um, so if you want to help me in any of these things, um, I'm providing, we're providing stuff that makes all this easier. And if you want to share your code publicly and help build this next thing, um, I'll even pay for an AWS bill. Um, so what we really want is like this new world of like reproducible parts, right, of Legos. Right? When you give everyone basic Legos, like they can build really cool stuff. So art is good. I appreciate art. Right? There's like something, looking back, I, I, there's something about that system that we designed that was really cool. Right? It was unique and everything. And I can appreciate art. Right? Um, and that's really good. I think art is great. We should celebrate art. But that's not what we do. We're infrastructure people. Right? Fundamentally, whether you like it or not, Linux is an infrastructure thing. It's like the concrete that makes the modern world like, like live. So art is really cool, we should appreciate art, but the ability to do, and there's, there are obviously containers here, there's like a, get it? Like, right, you know, right? And then the crane, the crane is like Kubernetes, and like Juju's like the guy like driving it. It's like, I got it all figured out. Um, so yeah, so we're infrastructure people. So while art is really cool, your ability to make something reproducible, something observable, something that's easily debugged, that you're sharing, uh, you know, across a large swath of people makes things really, really possible. So I was just in Washington, D.C., and I saw the space shuttle, like they had it. And it's a lot bigger than you'd think, right? Because when they put on the rocket, it looks really small, right? And I sat there and I looked up I, underneath and looked at all how complex that thing was, just the fact that it worked. We put a dude on the moon. Think about that for a second, right? Because like we lose that kind of grand scale where it's like, okay, I